What up, y'all? This is Jay Watts with my man King James right here. King See, James. now y'all know what he look like. See, y'all, he he always in the comments all the I time. Got him a camera. He got the cam. See, like I said, my man, and I gave him a t-shirt too. See, so when he go out, he got the tips appreciated across the shoulder, so people know, hey, tip my man. You know what? He yes, out here, sir. he out here busting his ass for y'all. Tip my man. Take care of him. James always appreciate it. That's right. That's right, yeah. brother. Hey, man, I appreciate you always being in the appreciate comments. You, brother. You always, you know, putting out good energy, good vibes, letting the new drivers know, you know, the shit's going to be hard, but we can get it done. We can get it done. That's right, yeah, brother. Keep our head up. All right, man. Hey, this is Uber GPZ, Jay <laughs> Weezy with my man King James. Y'all met him. Y'all met him. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Jay Watts with Uber GPZ once again. And it's been a long week. I know you're kind of looking around like, what's going on? I spent some of my time off to build me a new soundproof booth for my lives. So I'm still working with the sound quality, trying to get it all right. But once I start doing better with the quality of the lives, I think they'll, they still got the good information, but I want them to be real good. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be like a movie type of deal where the, the sound quality is like popping and all of that. But, you know, today I spent the day, I kind of cruised a little bit, you know, had to drive the Jeep for a little bit. The part works. Met up with my man, King James, as you saw. You know, I hooked him up. You know, he's always been a supporter of the channel, and I would like to do this more with other supporters of my channel. You know, people out there who are leaving great content for new drivers and other experienced drivers who just want to learn stuff. Because even as an experienced driver, I'm still learning markets. I'm still learning how to do things. Because the market is forever changing. The app is forever changing. The algorithm is forever changing. So we got to stay up. Just because you've been driving for five years, today's price is not yesterday's price. I'm sorry. But the apps today are not five years ago apps. Lyft today is not Lyft from two years ago. Uber today is not Uber from three years ago. So if you don't stay grinding and stay knowing what's going on, chatting in these comments with each other, keeping each other up to speed, you're going to get left behind. And like I said, I protect people on my channel, especially the drivers on my channel. I protect them from ridicule. I don't allow haters and all those other people to jump on my channel and ridicule us for trying to feed our families and help each other. I shut it down at the door. I check it at the door. This is not the space for it. We got other channels on the, on YouTube that they can use. If they want to do that, fine. You know, I'm I'm all for free speech. But, you know, I don't walk into a church talking about strip clubs either because there's a time and it's a place for things. It's, it's free speech to talk about strip clubs all you want. But you ain't walking in church Sunday talking about, you know, what you was doing in the strip club all week. No, because you have common sense enough to know the room you're in. So when you're on my channel, have common sense enough to know what room you're in. This is not the room for haters. This is not time to ridicule drivers. We're here to help each other. And that's what I tend to do. So for the other drivers out there who you guys, I know you're, you're leaving great content. You're helping make my videos pop because, you know, your comments are content. And people read these and they are helping each other. So I like to give back. You know what I'm saying? So on a few of my lives coming up. I'll be having a couple of contests here and there, giving out free shirts, whatever. I might have something that I bought off the internet that I didn't like. I'll give that away too. I mean, I gave away a whole set of Jeep tires like a couple of months ago. Five. Five tires with rims on it, fully pumped up and everything. I just sat it in front of my house. And within 20, 30 minutes, somebody came and grabbed all five of them. Because I don't have time to sell shit. I'm a person. I'm too busy for that. Them wheels are probably worth total. You know, somebody's going to try to, you know, negotiate all the way down to about six, seven hundred bucks, whatever. I could care less. I don't got time to deal with it. So I like to give people things. If I have enough, I share with the community around me. I don't feel like, you know, greed is the way that I want to live my life. I'm not one of those greedy people. I quit corporate a long time ago. I understand how greed works. So for the people that are on this channel, helping me build this channel, I'm going to return that energy back to you. There's no reason why I shouldn't return that energy back to you. I don't have to make you buy. Now, I got a whole t-shirt website full of shirts. If you want to buy one, go buy one. JMBTs.com. Go. I got Lyft shirts on there, Uber Eats shirts. I got all kinds of shit on there. If you want one, go buy one. But if you don't, you want to just hang out and keep supporting the channel, eventually you might get one for free because I'm not here to sell you shit. I mean, if you want to buy something, knock yourself out. If you don't, knock yourself out. But I make this a safe space. So we can trade ideas back and forth. We can trade success back and forth. We can be proud of who we are. Don't be ashamed to be a driver. I remember when people used to laugh, oh, you're an Uber driver? That's all? you just an Uber driver? Man, you stupid. Then they see how much money we make, and they're like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to quit my job and be an Uber driver. This is what happens when you change the narrative. They had a narrative of drivers aren't worth nothing. Drivers ain't nothing. Drivers are uneducated. Drivers are they finding out we're business people. 
we've got pretty expensive vehicles. We make a lot of money in a short amount of time. Now they see, oh, oh, because I don't know what driver some of these people knew to think that we couldn't afford the cars we were driving. How you afford this big old Jeep, man? How you afford this nice BMW, man? What you making? This? Oh, damn. I make that in like three, four weeks of work. Yeah. Trust me. Uber drivers are not what they were two, three years ago. We see a lot of them in the comments all on different channels being still butt hurt. They still hurt. And we see it. I mean, look at the comments. You can just see, man, I used to drive four years ago. I'm so glad I quit. Cool. I used to, I just quit three months ago. I'm so glad I quit. Cool. But they're still in the ride share space. They're hurt. They looking to lash out and they trying to find other people who are in that same hurt space they in and wanting to drag them down. I wear a shirt sometimes. Low vibration people will pull you down. I'm here to pull you up. I'm a high vibration person. I'm a high energy person. I'm a believer in myself that if I push myself hard enough, I can get whatever I want out of this life. Ain't no app going to tell me what I can and can't have. I believe that. So if you think the app is controlling you, then you're nothing but for Micah. Like what my boy Sergio says, you're just for Micah. If you think the app controls you, you're remote control for Micah. For me, I like I said, I ain't drove since Sunday. I just washed my car today. It was covered in dirt. Car ain't never been that dirty. But I had a hard week last week. That was a hard four or five days of work. I can't do that around the clock. So I give all drivers that do that around the clock, hey, mad props to you. I can't do, you know, 70, 80 hours a week every week. I can't do that. If I knock out 40, 50 hours in a week, I'll probably take the next week off. Because I'm used to driving 24 hours, 30 hours, and coming up with close to two grand. Because I've learned my market. I could do that. When I didn't know my market, it took me 60, 70 hours just to make 1,500, 1,700, 1,800. It took me that long. Now, I cut that time in half because I know what I'm worth. The client, that trash, don't deal with that trash. Don't think, oh, I'm going to help this person get somewhere. No, you're helping the app stack profits because you're not smart enough to say you deserve more of the shares of that fare than what they're giving you. So let them sit that fare to the side. Let them add a bonus to it. Let them add a streak to it. Now take that ride. Got to wait it out. Be patient sometimes. The money is there, but if you're snatching the first thing that's on the table, you're missing out. I don't snatch the first thing on the table. I see something on the table, 50, 60 bucks. Looks good, but yeah, no, nah, not for me. And that's how you got to do ride share. It's a business. It's all intellectual. It, I know it takes a lot to drive, and people say, well, you're just driving and using your turn signal, and you're just doing this. And doing this. Cool. If that's what you think, cool. You're entitled to your thoughts. But when you see us making this amount of money, don't get upset that you didn't think of the way we thought of how to make money. Well, I can only make 600 bucks doing that because you're not thinking of it in the way that we're thinking of it. Change your state of mind. Change your mentality. You change your bank account. You keep the same mentality. You wonder why your bank account ain't growing because your mind ain't growing. Your thoughts ain't growing. Your intellect ain't growing. Your bank account going to stay the same size it's always been. The moment you expand your thought, that's when your bank account changes. Everybody sits in this, it's called a parabola. It's like this. This is a 1%, then you go up to like the 97, 98%, then you back down to the 1%. There's people at both ends. You want to be at one of these ends, the good end. I don't know if this, this end is good or that end is good, but you don't want to be in the middle. The middle is the average person. If you're average, you're going to do average. Don't think like the big bulk in the middle because you're thinking average. Think completely different. Think of something that nobody else would think about. Then try it. Not a lot of people like driving from 7 at night to 4 or 5 in the morning. I do it all the time. Oh, I'm too scared of that. That's cool. I'm from the streets. I'm, I'm just going back to the streets. I'm from the streets. So it don't bother me. Oh, man, I'm scared. I get it. I get it. But not everybody drives. If everybody drove from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 p.m., then you have a huge market sat saturation. Tons of people driving at the same time. Me, if I say, hey, ain't nobody driving at night because everybody's scared to drive at night and I'm the only one out here. Sometimes people be like, man, there ain't no drivers out. You're like the only one. That's why I'm getting a $15 tip because I took that ride. That's why I get that $20 tip, $5 tip, $8 tip. You have to think different to get different. You think like everybody else, you're going to end up like everybody else. Look at all these channels with all these people who are horribly upset. Ride share sucks, Uber sucks, lip sucks. They're all in one big group. They all thought the same thing. Look at the real small group that's successful. Like I said, we the 300. Look at the small group who think different, who move different, who do different. Why are we not like them? Because we moved 
differently. If we thought the same things they thought, had the same mindset they thought, we'd be on the same channels they own, saying the same shit they saying. We'd be them. We'd be just like them, but we're not. And instead, we're looking out for each other, hoping each other does well, pushing out positive energy, hoping people gain success in whatever market they in, drive whatever car they drive and pick up whoever people they picking up. We are hoping for that for them. We hope that. And when you radiate that, you create that. When you radiate shit, you're going to create nothing but shit all around you. And that's what a lot of these drivers are doing, and they don't even see it. They just see their bank account dwindling. The more shit they start, the lower their bank account gets. The more, And they live in check to check. I'm going to get a different job. Still live in check to check because it's all up here. They don't get it yet. If you're doing well in ride share, congratulations. This shit's not easy for nobody, not even for me. Why do you think I took this week off? Mentally, I needed a break. It was a crazy week. Fun, trust me, very fun, but it was a crazy week. I needed a little break. My body needed a break. My mind needed a break, and I was able to afford a break. Sometimes, you know, I, that's why I love ride share. If you say, you know, I need like a three-day vacation. You ain't got to ask nobody. You ain't got to call Uber. Uber, is it okay if I just don't drive? You ain't got to call nobody. Just don't walk outside. It's that damn easy. But for the people out there who are still grinding out, still churning it, you know what? Stay safe. Keep your head on a swivel. Make sure everything around you is, is on the up and up. Because if you see some shady shit, drive off. Cancel. And if the person be like, I don't know why you canceled me. Well, I was expecting to pick up one person. And I see four dudes walking up with hoods and masks on. I'm taking off. I don't care if they with you or not. I'm taking off. Well, they wasn't with me. I don't care. I'm taking off. Look out for yourself out there. It's a lot going on. But we can make it through this. As drivers that stick together, like I said, I don't worry about the apps. The apps are going to do what the apps do to make profits so they can stay in business. All of these other X drivers, oh, I can't wait till these apps crash and they go out of business. They're talking about us. Honestly, they're talking about us. They can't wait till we fail. That's basically what they're saying. Oh, yeah, you guys need to make another app. They're not making another app. It's a lot of rhetoric. Make another app. Do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. It's all rhetoric. They're wishing for our failure. I'm wishing for us to rise up. I hope the apps do well. I hope the apps start being more fair. I hope the apps start being more lenient and more secure and safe with the different riders we're getting. I hope for a lot of good things. That's why good things happen. You get those people that hope for a lot of shit, and that's why shit happens to them. Change your mind. You change your bank account. Change that narrative. Get out there and get that money the right way. Like I said, it's not going to be easy, but this shit ain't for everybody. Just like I was married to a nurse before. I'm not a nurse. I can't be a nurse. Nursing is good money, but it's not for me. I can't stand the sight of blood. So that shit's not going to work for me. But some people are perfect at being a nurse. They're designed for that shit, born for that shit. Some people are designed for ride share. Some people aren't. They think they can just because they own a fucking car. Not everybody's designed for ride share. It's just not in them. They don't have that customer service. They don't have that personality. They don't have that ability to, to network with 20 people. We're dealing with 20 different passengers, sometimes three or four in a car at a time. You've got to know how to handle that. If that overwhelms you and stresses you out and you can't have this many people in the car with conversations and you can't hear people talking over people, and all, maybe this shit ain't for you. you got to think about it. There's people out there who can't deal with anxiety and overwhelming information. We see that shit just talking on lives. People be like, oh, my God, I can't deal with people talking over people. I can't. How in the hell are you in ride share? I mean, I'm driving through traffic, 60 miles an hour, car swerving this and that. I'm hearing conversation, keeping up, got music playing. I mean, there's a lot of shit going on. If you can't sit on a live and watch two people talking without freaking the fuck out, maybe ride share is not for you. Well, I can't deal with it. There's too many people talking on the live. He's talking over him. He's talking over. I can't hear the Maybe Rasher is not for you. Maybe you freaking the fuck out. And that's the level of anxiety you've got. Because shit like that don't bother me. And I think that's why I do so well at Rasher. Got to have a thick skin. I'm a garage guy. Motorcycles. Loud sounds in my ear. Eight bikes around me and I can't hear myself think. But guess what? I'm having a great time. Fucking the louder the exhaust, the better. I have a great time doing that. Some people can't handle that. So think about the mentality of Rasher. Think about how you're out here in these streets. Navigate your way around, learn your market. It's a lot involved in ride share. And if you're not ready for it, this may not be the shit for you. And all you're doing is oversaturating the market that you don't even want to be in. Think about it.